read. Come on up. He wants you to read the card you printed out today, passed out. So Miss Elaine Hacker, she loves working and serving behind the scenes, and she does a lot. She comes up with ideas and texts me and calls. Hey, do you want me to do this and this and this for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I won't say no. All right. Elaine, how long have you been doing this? Oh, for probably 20 years at different churches. Yeah. It's my way of walking up to a perfect stranger and saying, pick a card, any card. <laughs> Awesome. I stay behind the scenes because yeah. I'm sort of bashful. I know the last time that you had put out the card, it was the same thing that what I preached on that day. And today, um, the message is about Holy Spirit. Um, you know. And I've had this first laying on my desk for four months. He gives them to me, and I print them. I print out 90 labels. And last night at 11.30, he got me up and said, go put this one on cards and give it out tomorrow. And what it says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 15, 13. Yeah. And he's really, the Holy Spirit's been working because I'm hitting yeah. Jason the sermons and don't yeah. even know it. So, but. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, come on. Thank you, Jesus. I love the obedience. You guys, this is just another way. You know, obedience is key to all things. Thank you, Elaine. You guys doing good today? I've been messed up by the presence of God this morning. Is there a ring in this? I'll go to handheld if, if it's a... Uh... Where's that white mic at? Kelly. We're all family, so this it doesn't matter if we have a lot of if we have technical difficulties, it don't matter. I don't even it don't even move me anymore. Are we good with the just close me in a little bit on that? Alright. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans chapter eight, verse six. Romans chapter eight, verse six. And I'm gonna talk a little bit this morning about I feel like that God wants to redirect us this morning. I feel like that a lot of times that we are, we are, we are caught up in the world. We're caught up in our flesh. We're caught up in the things that, that we feel like we, we can do and some of those things are okay to do. But in the flesh, we're doing some things that God is just not pleased with. He's not pleased with some of the stuff we do. And even if it's okay because we're, we're taking it too far, we're going too deep into the things of the flesh or the things of the world, and this is kind of like this picture here is kind of like how some Christians are. They're just scattered all over the place, you know. They want God. They want that life with God, but they're just scattered because they don't know what to do, and their life is not coming in order. And every now and then they'll cross over and get on track just, just periodically. They'll get on track, and they'll feel that, like, I want that. I remember when I was searching for God, I went through all kind of phases, and I went through all kind of jobs and all kind of stuff. And really, what I was seeking was Him. I didn't even know what I was seeking, but I, but I was, I found out now that I was seeking Him through all those. And I look back, and even this morning, I look back at all the different things that I stepped into. I'm like, what was I doing? I was seeking God and didn't even know it because our spirit strives for that. Our spirit longs to be centered up with God. The spirit that is inside of us longs for us to be in alignment. And when we are off track, you know that a train, when it's off track, it's derailed. It goes nowhere. It can go nowhere. and stuck. And so this morning I want you to know that God wants to take us from that place of being stuck, that place of going nowhere, that place of um, just being in a rut and taking us somewhere deeper. And this is what it says in, in this, um, and I'll switch to the handheld if this is too, because it's, are you good? Let me switch. Oh, you don't hear the, I can, all right, I can hear it up here, but it's all right. I just don't want to, I know it would irritate me if I was listening to it. So in this it says, for the mindset on the flesh is death. 
where is your mindset? It says the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. Life and peace are so valuable to have peace in your home. You know, my grandkids come over this weekend, and, and, and I'm not knocking their life, but, I'm, but there's a lot of stuff that's going on. They have a farm. They have all kind of stuff going on, and there's a lot of things going on in, in their life, you know, and they're constantly running. And they come uh, to, with, with my wife and I, and they just they love the peace that is, that, is, that is surrounded us. They like that, just like, you know, a little Elijah said, he goes, Poppy, he goes, I just need to have, like, peace in my life. I just need some things just to settle down because he don't learn well in chaos. He learns well with peace. And that's what he wants. And when he comes with us, they do, they take their, te- they're doing their school stuff and they're doing really well because it's, their minds are able to think on what they're doing and not all this clutter that's going on. And we can fill our lives so much with clutter, with things of the world that we lose out on peace. And it'll bring a death blow to us. You guys like to travel. I love to travel. And I know most men like to travel and they like to go off-road and go everywhere but where they're actually headed. And, you know, um, I'll get that death look from my wife. Um, This thing, you know, being in the flesh because I want to go over here and check this out. She's like, I want to get there now. I want to get there now. Like, I want to fly, but you're going to drive, and I want you to drive straight there. And so that's my wife. She, like, wants me to get there. And I kind of, this morning when I was praying, I was, you know, I fashion like the Holy Spirit is always that navigational system redirecting us back, redirecting us back on track, redirecting us back in the, in the where we're supposed to go. You know, I mean, you got your GPS set to go to, to Destin, Florida, and you stop at the gas station. It says, it tries to reroute you and take you a whole nother way. Or it says, you're off track. Get back on the road. Get, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. And if you hear the Spirit, if you know the Spirit of God, the Spirit is constantly trying to tell you, get back on track. Get back in line with what God has for you. Because believe it or not, every one of you, every one of you have the fullness inside of you, already inside of you what God has called you to be. There's nothing that, what he has packed in that, nothing you cannot do if you tap into that. He's already dreamed of you to be amazing sons and daughters. And you have to tap into that thing that he said, just like when you plant a seed, everything is in that seed to cause it to do what it needs to do. I'm going to switch mics. Yeah, green light. All right, that's better, I think. I don't know. Everything in, listen, everything in that seed is already there to produce whatever it is that that seed is called. Corn, wheat, doesn't matter. Everything is already jam-packed in there. But the word of God has to water that. The, the water from the world, the water from, from God has to water that natural seed and to grow. And the word of God is water for your soul, for the things that God has for you. <laughs> Father, we just love you this morning. You are so amazing. We just thank you, God, for uh, technology. Lord, we thank you for any difficulties that you just just working all these things out. So we glorify you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. For the mind of the Spirit is set, is, for the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace because the mind set on the flesh is hostile toward God and it does not subject itself to the law of God for it is not even able to do so. When you walk in the flesh, you can't even do the things that God wants you to do because you're walking in the flesh. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. If you're walking in the flesh in any way, shape, or form, you cannot even please God because you're in the flesh. Even the small amounts of flesh that you walk in, you cannot be pleasing to God. He wants you to be centered up with him, doing everything that he's called you to do because he knows what he needs you to do to get the best results out of that. In Romans 
8.26, it says this. We go to 8.26, we're skipping down. I read, read all of those from, read all of those because it's a really good passage all the way through. But I want to come down to here. And it says, in the same way, the Spirit also helps us in our weakness. When you're weak, the Spirit, if you don't have the Spirit of God in you, you need to have the Spirit of God in you. When you get saved and you get saved and you ask God to forgive you, repentance is so beautiful. When you ask God to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness, and you ask the Holy Spirit to come in and invade your life, when He does that, it changes everything. And without that, you will be off track. Without the Spirit of God, you will be off track. You will find yourself wandering back and forth, back and forth, trying to figure out what you're supposed to do in life, where you're supposed to go, who you're supposed to meet, what job you're supposed to have. Without the Spirit, you're just constantly in a race trying to find out who you are, what you're supposed to do. And it says here, and the Spirit is your help in weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we should. But the Spirit itself intercedes for us with groanings deeper than words. That's how the Spirit of God inside of you prays with you and for you. And it said, he who searches the heart knows the mind of the Spirit. So God knows the mind of the Spirit. And it says that because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The Spirit knows the will of God for your life. And that's why when you have the Spirit, he knows the will. That's why he's trying to get you back on track. When you get off, it's like Spirit saying no. That navigation is saying no. Get back on the highway. Get back on the highway. Get back on the highway. Spirit saying no. Don't go that way. Get get away from that woman. Get away from that man. Get back on track with your life. What you're supposed to do. And that's what Spirit does. That's how Spirit guides us and leads us. According to the will of God, and it says, and we know that God causes. This is. Write this verse down, um, Romans 8, 28. We know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love him. Even when you've screwed it all up, he causes all things to work good. You can look at your life and see how many times you've messed it up. He causes all things to become good to those who love God, and to those who are called according to his purpose. And I want you to know this morning, I want to encourage you this morning, every one of you have purpose this morning. Your purpose is greater sometimes than what you can ever imagine. Do you think that David thought that when he was a little boy out in the field um, tending to the sheep, do you ever thought that he, that, he, that he thought in his mind that he would slay a giant because that giant was bad mouth in his God? He wasn't going to tolerate it. Just like we don't tolerate people talking about other people or people talking about our God wrong or people tearing us down or tearing someone else down. I don't tolerate it. When someone tears my wife down, I'm like, well, we don't don't do that. When someone tears another pastor down, I'm like, no, we don't do that. I don't agree with them. That's all right, but we don't tear them down. We can disagree, but we don't tear people down. We don't tear anyone down. But do you think David thought that he was... uh, ever going to do that? Do you ever, do you think he ever thought that he was going to be a king of Israel written down in the history books of life, being a king, even through all of his mess ups? The Bible says he was a man after God's own heart. So when we mess up, it's all right. Get back up, get up, do it again. Get up. Start all over. God, I messed up. Forgive me. Put it behind you and move forward. Don't take shame, condemnation. That's not from God. That's from the world. Put it behind you when you mess up. Get up, start all over, start a fresh day, and go on and do what God has called you to do. There's so many people in the Bible. You can tell there's so many stories in the Bible that you can read that these people, they didn't know they were going to be all these things. They didn't know they were going to be all these things. They never seen those things. They never understood those things, that God had this purpose and had this value for them and had this plan for them. 
And I think a lot of you don't even realize you just live a nominal life. Some of you a nominal Christian life. You're just going through life floating on the surface. I'm going to church Sunday. I'm going to go do whatever I want to do Monday. And that might be fun for a little while, but after a while, you're going to get off track. After a while, you're going to get off track, and things are starting, going to start going the wrong way, and things are starting downhill, and you're going to start going so fast downhill that you didn't even realize how fast you were going. And when you come to that curve, you're just going to go off, and you're going to be a train wreck. It's going to be a mess. Your life is going to be a mess all over again. Do you think Peter thought that he would ever be walking with the Messiah that he was waiting on? I mean, the 12 disciples, Jesus called to help him. There's a song I want to see. Jesus called to help him. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James' brother, John. Philip, Thomas, Matthew, James, the son of Altheus. Simon, Thaddeus, Judas, and Bartholomew. You think any one of those guys ever thought they were going to be walking with the Messiah? Talking with the Messiah? No. They were fishing. They were out fishing. They were out doing their things, tax collecting, being hated by people. They didn't know they were going to do that. But God had a purpose for them just like he has a purpose for you this morning. When you tap into that purpose, your life is going to be on track. When you tap into the purpose that God has for you, your life is going to be so on track. It's going to be so sweet and so pleasant. We have to get to that place of being on track with God doing what he has called for us to do. Some of us try to become things that we're not because of things that we see. I remember when I first started pastoring, (laughs) in my mind's eye, I was like, well, who do I want to be like? What pastor do I want to be like? And Stephen Furtick was my favorite. Um, I don't know if you know him from Elevation. Bill Johnson, Stephen Furtick. But I, I kind of like Stephen Furtick's, the way he does things. I just kind of like his mentality. You know, I love Bill Johnson's just calmness. I've met Bill, and I've not got, I've been real close to Steve, got, not got to meet him, but i um, love to meet him one day. But he was a personality that I loved, and I thought, man, if I could be like Stephen Furtick, and God says, no, 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 no. I want you to be like you. That's where you're going to be most productive. That's when you're going to be most productive. You cannot be like anybody else because that's not how I made you. We can have attributes, and we can have all kind of little attributes and, and things of other people, but, but the true call that we have for our life is who God has called us to be. And that's the purpose that he has for us to walk in that full calling that he has for you and for me. If you want to be a, a rock star, as I did, it would, it, it would have worked for a little while, and it would have been fun for a while, but it wouldn't have lasted long. Why? Because that's not who he called me to be. I would have been off track. I would have been sidetracked. I would have never accomplished the things that he's had me. I mean, when I was 16 years old seeking to be a rock star, and I'd already been through four dads in my life, I never thought I would ever... And the greatest thing, I never thought I would ever be doing something like this, but, but the greatest thing that I've gotten to do, I mean, I've gotten to travel all over the world. I've met thousands upon thousands of people. I've seen thousands upon thousands of healings in front of my face, healings. But I've never, never thought I would get, that I would get to stand with someone and bring them to Christ. Or stand with someone personally and speak identity into them. I remember the young girl in the hallway when she was fighting over whether she was a boy or a girl. Clearly, she was a girl. DNA says she was a girl. Her body parts said that she was a girl. But the lie that the enemy was speaking over her said, no. No, you. You might be a boy. And when she fought that, she fought that. When, I, when she was out in the hallway and I just, and I started speaking over her identity and she slid down the wall 
and fell into an encounter with Jesus to the point that she now says, I'm a beautiful woman. I never thought, you know, the, the places I've been in my life are beautiful. You know, in Haiti, there's places that Shelly and I were standing up on this mountain, you know, and like they don't even know what they have. And even there, they're seeking shoes and phones. Shoes and phones, why? Because it's things of the world. I like shoes, and I got a lot of shoes. If you need shoes, I've got shoes. I just like having different shoes. But, but that's not my mainest thing. That's not the mainest thing that I'm seeking, if that's even a word. The mainest thing for me is seeking people for him. Seeking people for kingdom, seeing people getting saved, seeing people getting rocked for Jesus, seeing people becoming greater than I am even. I'm great because he says I'm great. We talk every day. He tells me how wonderful I am, how amazing I am, and I tell him how amazing he is. My goal is to create an army of people that are even more amazing than that. Your goal is to create people that are more powerful than you in vocals, in singing. Your goal is to create people who are more powerful than you. When you lead them in the worship, your goal is to bring up better people that lead them closer. When you're a prayer warrior, your, your focus is to make people become better prayer warriors than you ever would be. Why? Because Jesus is a servant, and that's what he's come to do is serve, and that's the greatest thing. We can walk in that servanthood. We can walk in that, that, that repentance and that obedience of what God has for us. The theme today is the Spirit of God. Without the Spirit, you can pretty much do nothing. But with the spirit and obedience, repentance, you can walk in the fullness that God has for you. So many of you are outside of the will of God. You might be inside a church. You might be inside the four walls and you lean on your own understanding. Your own understanding says, I'm all good. But on the outside looking in, perspective that I see, no, you're not. And his perspective is, no, you're not. Because if you're not right on track with everything he has you to be, not centered up with Jesus, not centered up with the things that he has for you, you're not on track. But he has purpose for you to be on track. And that is having Holy Spirit in your life. He says that he is there in our weakness. He's there to make us strong. He's there to intercede. He's there to be that navigator to get you back on track. If you start listening to the Holy Spirit rather than listening to the world or all those things that you let come into your ear, if you listen to the Holy Spirit speak to you, Watch where he will take you. Watch how your life will turn upside down almost instantaneously. When you are in that navigational system and, 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 and your wife has to go and use the restroom so you get off and it says get back on, you get off and it says get back on, you get off, it says get back on. When you get back on, it takes you where you're going to go. And as soon as you get off again, it tells you, Reroute, reroute, reroute. I don't even know how to shut off when I go to the bathroom because I'm like, my phone's still telling me, reroute. You walk in the store to get something, reroute. You're, you're like, shut up. You gotta, I don't even know how you can, can you pause it? I don't even know. But I was like, just turn it down and let it reroute, reroute, reroute. And then I get back on the road like, you're going good. You're going great. You know, I mean, I don't know. Maybe we need to come up with an app like that to just root you on and like, you know. You're doing great. You're doing a great job. I know your wife's got to be happy right now because you're on the way to the beach and she's wanting to go to the beach. I know that she's excited right now. That would be a good app. I 
I mean, the main goal today is that you search your heart and know the Holy Spirit is in your life and know that you're being navigated by the Holy Spirit. As I said, the 12 disciples, David, Moses, we can go on and on. They did not see the dream that God had for them. But he lays it out for you. The seed that he's planted in you, your purpose that he has planted in you is already there. You just have to water it with the word of God. You have to nourish it with repentance, belief, and watch how those things start coming out. Watch how it starts growing. I love this season. I love the season that we're in right now. It's just an amazing season. This is one of my favorite times of the year um, just because of the harvest and the growth and all the things that we get to see. It's one of my favorite things. And I, when I farmed, I loved it because you you seen what was happening. You seen when you you labored and you tilled the ground, you know, and and you planted the seed in perfectly straight rows. I don't know if anybody's ever planted. They got this arm that comes down, and 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 the thing about it is, I remember when I first started as a little boy. I was out there. I mean, I was driving a big old eleven hundred Massey Ferguson, and uh, if you don't know what that is, it's a big tractor, pulling a big old disc behind it. And my disc lines, I would look and my disc lines would get like this. I'm like, how do I get, how do I get this thing? You know, because the tractor, it's back and forth, you know, it's like this. And I figured it out. I figured it out. If I find one thing to look at and I focus on that one thing, I look behind me and my path was straight. When you walk with Jesus and you focus on him, your path will be straight. You won't be doing all this thing. As a little boy, I learned that. And then when you make that first, that first, first path, you make that path straight. And then you lay that arm down when you go around the corner. And you line that up with one of those rows. And all you got to do now, you can just follow that because that first path was made straight. Jesus made that straight path for you and I to walk in that. That's what he's done for you and I made the way straight that you and I could walk in that straight path. I'm not going to talk long this morning because I don't want to be about me. I could drag it out and give you a bunch of other stuff. But I want you to know this morning, I do not want anyone to leave without Holy Spirit in their lives. I pray in the Spirit often. I speak words that I don't even know what I'm saying because I'm speaking in the Spirit. I'm praying in the Spirit. I'm glorifying God in ways I didn't even know I knew how to do it. Why? Because the Spirit is inside of me. And those things are already inside of me. Spirit is rooting for me. Jason, get back on track right here. And I've got this for you. I've got this thing right here for you. It's going to rock your world. Earlier during prayer, I got so wrecked by spirit, I almost fell down. I was hoping there was someone behind me, but I didn't even look to see it because I thought I was going to fall, and, and I didn't, but... I want to always be encountered by him. I don't want the world. I've had my taste of the world. It wasn't no good. It tasted like honey for a little bit, that honey we had this morning. It tasted like honey for a little bit, but yeah, it gets bitter pretty quick. I don't want that for you. He don't want that for you. Spirit don't want that for you. You want to see the chairs fill up. 
You want to see this city turn upside down. Just this little group right here. That's all we need. When you're fully walking in that straight path and you're walking in the way that God's called you to watch, walk, this city will be turned upside down. It has to be. My encouragement for you this morning is seek His face. Seek Holy Spirit. If you don't have a prayer language, ask Him for it. If you've never been baptized by the Holy Spirit, ask Him for it. And what's going to happen is this. The sound in the atmosphere that's going to be created is going to draw them in. It's going to draw people to where God is. We don't have to do none. We don't have to make any of those sounds. The sound that the Spirit makes as us being in one accord is going to draw people in to this place or to another place that's, that's, that's doing what we're doing don't have to be this place. So let's stand. The message is happy. The message is happy. You have purpose today. He has purpose for you. You need to walk in that purpose by having Holy Spirit in your life. Without Holy Spirit, you will not be able to fulfill the purpose that God has for you. It's that simple. So my question is for you, do you have Holy Spirit in you? So I want you to look at your life for just a moment. We're going to take a second, close your eyes, look at your life. And tell me, and tell the Holy Spirit, is your life chaos in and out? Show me that first frame real quick, Faye. That red. Is your life looking like this? Or is it looking like this? You just go. There's going to be some bumps. There's going to be some waves. But it's all on the same track. That's what our life needs to look like. Your thoughts are going to get off and they're going to get back on. But your walk can be straight and narrow. So close your eyes. Look at your life and, and ask yourself, is, is my life in the red or in the blue, in the green? Is it peaceful is it chaotic? Are my, my bills being paid? Or am I struggling? Am I the job I'm supposed to be at or I'm just getting by? Making it through. God has even a job for you that will make you happy and make you full of joy. Why? Because joy and peace are part of his job. Part of Holy Spirit's job for our life is peace and joy. So look at your life and say, is my life in turmoil? And, and be honest with yourself. I mean, you know how you guys live. You know how you live. You know if the kids are running ragged and the kids are all over the place and every decision you make is all over the place and you're just going off a whim every time you make a, make a choice. I tell you how you can judge it. You can like when you go and look at uh, um, when you look at something and you say, "I want that," and you just go buy it. Or you look at marketplace and you go, "Wow, I like that." I just buy it. Um, or you go on Amazon and you got fifty-five packages coming to your door a week, you know, and you don't have a business um, that needs those packages to come. That might be um, kind of just scattered. Don't let's get what you want, and just because you want it doesn't mean you should have it. But what you do need is the Holy Spirit this morning. So if your life is chaos, I encourage you to come up front and ask the Holy Spirit to invade you, to come into your life. If you have walls up, let the walls down so he can come in and do what he's supposed to do. We play that Honey in a Rock song again. That'll be your altar call song. I'm going to close it with that. Next week, come to the foundational class in the morning. Um, pack that place out to where we have to bring it into this room. Pack it out, pack it out, pack it out. It's going to be good. You've got to have a solid foundation. Come and pray. 
pray with someone. Don't leave until God says to leave. Love you guys. Have a blessed week.